Hi everybody, it's Rachel with BPI. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today um, after feeling inspired by uh, Joy's self-compassion live this morning um, about my son's um, diagnosis and our my journey through it, our journey through it, um, how it went and how I felt. Um, as you can tell from the caption, it was um, extremely shocking and hard to get over. And I've thought about doing this live for a long time now, um, but have always um, kind of shied away from it. Uh, maybe not felt strong enough to do it um, and wanted um, to make sure that I emotionally felt strong enough to talk about it. Uh, after talking with uh, Joy yesterday on the phone, thanks Joy, um, she really empowered me to speak a little bit more about it. I told her this is the first time in probably a year and a half where I didn't feel like I needed to cry every single time I talked about it. Um, maybe that will change in this live. I'm not sure. Um, we're going to keep it kind of going. Um, so for everyone that's kind of been following me um, in my in my journey with BPI, you'll know that I have twin Four year olds, almost five year olds, my goodness. And um, that uh, Nico from birth was always missing milestones, and milestones become, I think, uh, a hard thing when you have a parent of a special, or when you're a parent of a special needs child, um, <clears throat> especially a twin. And I know we can't compare them, but um, one wasn't developing the way the other one was. Um, and I remember going to my pediatrician and having those conversations and my pediatrician telling me, well, you can't compare kids. And I'm like, well, I'm not trying to compare kids. I'm just saying like, he's not doing these things that his brother is doing and the brother's meeting milestones and it doesn't look like we're meeting them here. And so finally about six months of going through all of this, um, at nine months, Nico was an unsupported sitter. I always kind of called him like a puddle of a person. He always needed some help to sit up. Um, and, and so finally we got involved in early intervention. And through early intervention, it was discussed to us that we needed to go through this diagnostic testing to kind of figure out what was going on with my kiddo. And I didn't understand at that time why that was so important um, as I do now. Um, the diagnostic testing, um, I live in the Chicago Landry region and I had to go down to downtown Chicago and take my little guy and it was two days worth of tests um, and then a follow up with the, the um, developmental pediatrician. And so showing up for those tests and I'm watching Nico not be able to interact. I'm watching Nico not be able to complete the test. I'm watching him um, not successful and it's breaking my heart every single time. And as a parent, you just want them to be okay, right? And so, you know, you catch yourself trying to encourage and get him to finish and do it and all those things, right? And so we go home telling my husband how things went um, and we get called back for the, the true diagnostic portion where we meet with the pediatrician. <clears throat> and the pediatrician starts to go through the list. And um, she then tells me that my son has autism. And I remember that emotion was like, I felt like my world had just ended. Um, I felt like I let him down. I felt like I was the failure. And truthfully, none of this is none of this was my fault. Um, so for all you parents that are going through a new diagnosis, um, I think it's really important to listen to Joy's live this morning and talking about like that self-compassion, that inner strength, that being kind to you. Don't live in that negative, neg negative. Um, because the only way that I could get through it was to be that warrior for my kid, right? So knowing deep down in, even though I lived in that grief and it's okay to grieve, I grieved for so long. I grieved on everything that I wanted for him, um, thinking about how he wouldn't get married or how he won't have kids or that he may not be able to drive a car or he won't go to college. And I struggled with all of that. And in that, I didn't live in what he could do. 
or what life may bring to him. Um, I was just living in all those things I wished for my kid. And maybe, you know what, maybe my kid didn't want any of those. You know, there's tons of people that don't get married and don't have kids and live beautiful, wonderful lives. Maybe he wouldn't go to college. Maybe he would go to a trade school. Maybe he would pick something else to do. But I remember being in that moment and just grieving that life I thought he had lost. Now I can look at it and be like, Rachel, what were you doing? You were just punishing yourself. Um, don't punish yourself. Start to think about all those things that he can do. And through ABA, I have learned so many things of what my kid can do and the strength that this kid has. Um, I always tell people that it could be so much worse. And I get a lot of the looks from other parents as we're in school of, oh my goodness, how do you do it? Well, what do you mean how you can do it? You, you love your child no matter what, right? They don't look at his strength. They don't look at what he can do. Um, I am so thankful every day that my child can tell me that he loves me, that he can give me a hug. He celebrates that I'm home. Um, you need to know that you are stronger than you think all you autism parents out there give me so much hope for what you can do, for what your kids can do. I thought I wasn't going to cry, but I kind of am a little, so I apologize for that. But self-compassion, be kind to you. Know that you are doing your best, and that's all anyone can ever expect of you. So for more information about BPI, about ABA, you can visit us at www.bpiaba.com. Thanks, everybody.